How's it going? This is Than from Tidal Gardens. Acans in the past couple of years have quickly become one of the most popular stony corals. They come in a fantastic array of colors and can be propagated easily. In fact, they can be propagated so easily that I thought that they would be pretty much as common as Xenia by now. Suddenly though, many hobbyists started losing theirs. Half of this video is going to cover propagation, but the other half is going to be on care tips. At one time, we had about 50 different types of acans at our greenhouse, and some of them didn't make it. Some of them we know succumbed to bacterial infections, but I think the root cause was nutrition or lack thereof. The thing about acans is they're less sensitive to flow or light. They can do well in calm flow or strong flow. We've also kept them under a wide variety of light conditions, though they tend to do a little bit better when it's not too bright. Once we began feeding diligently, however, our success rate went way up with these corals. We feed these corals now almost as much as we feed our non-photosynthetic corals. When feeding these corals, you want to initially spray them with a trace amount of food to initiate their feeding response. Once they have their feeding tentacles out, you can feed large quantities of meaty foods such as krill or mysis shrimp. You may be surprised at how much food they can consume. Once Acanthastria get fed regularly, they have their feeding tentacles out for most of the day. Now this may be anecdotal, but I look at this as a sign of good health, because these colonies tend to have the fewest health problems. As I mentioned before, propagating acans is very easy because they tend to heal well from cutting. Originally, I used a pair of bone cutters, which worked just fine, but occasionally would make a messy cut. These days, we use a bandsaw like this inland to make fine cuts to isolate small groups of polyps. A saw can be very expensive up front, but if you're looking to frequently propagate corals, they really are a time saver and can quickly make up their cost. If anything, the most time consuming part of having a saw is cleaning it once you're done so it doesn't rust. Once the cuts are made, I like to give the corals a quick dip in a disinfectant like iodine. Acans I found are susceptible to some pretty nasty bacterial infections, so a brief iodine bath goes a long way to preventing die off from cutting. In fact, if you see an acan receding from an infection, try giving it a dip in iodine for a few minutes a day and see if that helps. Okay, after the soak in iodine, we can pat the corals dry and glue them to a substrate. I should really buy some stock in this glue because we use it so much here. It's your typical 100% cyanocrylate gel that you find at a hardware store or a dollar store. It works great, and the tube of this stuff is something like 70 cents. We like to use frag discs as substrate, but anything would work really. Coral rubble can be used. We tend to go with pre-made substrates like plugs and discs because it makes organizing thousands of corals easier. Finally, we're all done and can reintroduce the acan frags that have been mounted back into the aquariums. We cut them small to take advantage of the way acans tend to grow. They develop new polyps at the edge of the colony, so a single head can quickly multiply because the entire polyp is essentially the edge. Here is the cutting after a week. Okay, thanks again for watching, and I hope this video was helpful to all those ACAN enthusiasts out there. Check us out online at TidalGardens.com.